Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to BSL 17 Hasu League semifinal. We got ranged going up against top speed. Bottom left hand corner, we got ranged starting as the green Protoss. Bottom right hand corner, we have top speed, aka Zazu, starting as I'm going to refer to him as Zazu from here on out. Starting as the peach flesh colored Zerg, which seems very appropriate. The opening map here is going to be retro. This is a best of five. The finals will be best of seven. And this could be a really interesting one because you have Zazu, who's one of those guys that is capable of nearly anything. He has all sorts of really aggressive style of play that's almost reminiscent of Rancor to a degree, but executes it quite well. And he's going up against Ranged, who has absolutely masterful game sense. If there's one thing I was going to say that is really outstanding about Ranged, when I think of Ranged thus far throughout the tournament, what I've noted more than anything is, is his game sense is absolutely incredible. He's got solid macro, his micro is not too shabby, but his his game sense and his ability to choose fights as a result of that game sense, in particular finding high ground battles, things like that. Really honestly, Polypoid has been his map. I'm trying to think if he's dropped one, I'll have to go back and find the stats and check. Meantime, it looks like we have an Overlord heading to the upper right hand corner. We have a pylon down, no probe scout, which suggests we are in fact going to see a gateway first opener. In the meantime, we have an overpool from Zazu. This has been a shift in the meta, more towards uh, to deal with opening gateways, to apply a little bit of pressure, get Zergling run buys, and cause a little bit more frustration for Protoss players. Ranged has been negligent here and there, as far as I've seen, about doing the Zealot blockades. We'll see if that is the case, in fact, here. It looks like we are not seeing gas tacked on, so it's just going to be overpooled to get the initial Zerglings out provide some threat and we're actually seeing a, an 11 nexus on the opposite end from range this could be extremely risky now so we had an overpool so the part of the problem for zazu though is that drone scouts coming out very very late to identify where his opponent's base is we do have a forge first which is going to be necessary the drone's actually going to drop the hatchery but because there wasn't a follow-up drone scout because this is more of a passive and it looks like it's just going to be the pair of Zerglings. If this was a full grouping of Zerglings, that could have been game. So ranged playing very risky economically in game one, sending out a probe, finds nothing at the nine o'clock base as far as overlords. So instead making his way to the top right. So looking to play it a little bit cheap as far as scouting goes. Forge is down. He needs to get at least two cannons out. And it looks like he actually built... So there's a cannon. Built a probe in between. The Zerglings are away. This could be very, very close. And it is six Zerglings. Keep in mind they are not speed upgraded. I am not sure how the timing of this is going to work out. Honestly, ranged to survive here needs to pull. So there's the gateway blockade, but this is still a wide open space. That cannon could easily get swarmed. He needs to pull probes to defend, but he doesn't know that he needs to because that probe has yet to scout his opponent's base. Luckily for him, Zazu holding up short, not sending the Zerglings direct. They came a little bit scattershot as it was and playing a little bit more defensively. So the cannon up, but the Zerglings are right here with absolutely no defense, not even a probe. And that cannon is getting ignored. Zazu actually going to skip it, move to the main. The probe's moving across, getting some free damage on the Zerglings as a result. Honestly, that could have been game right there if he had just targeted the cannon potentially and continued pressing with additional Zerglings across the field. Maybe feeling with a lack of larva, he didn't have an open opportunity. Ranged immediately abandoning his gas, continuing to battle. And this is big trouble for him. Looks like he's already down a probe. Keep in mind, he can recover a bit because he's got two Nexus and he's actually done pretty... Decent damage to at least two of the Zerglings, but it's going to be quite some time before a Zealot's out on the field. In the meantime, it looks like we've got a hatchery at the three o'clock location, the natural expansion up. Zazu is not yet saturated it, but it looks like right now is... Ooh, lost two additional Zerglings, so only one remains. Solid defense from ranged. The gas is quite a bit delayed, but the worker count's even. So Zazu in a solid position, the Zealot actually making its way out, ignoring... The Zergling that's still in the base, usually probes can defend themselves. Let's see if he can get some counter damage done now. But Zazu in an excellent opening position here to fill things out. He has started mining gas behind this. If he wants to transition into a Hydralisk all-in, that could be very, very strong. Or if he wanted to go for the standard 4-hatch, he theoretically would have an advantage. The last Zergling dispatch, but a good amount of chaos created. The Zealot actually marching up to the 3 o'clock location. And so this is bad news for range because he's not going to find anything here. So... I guess two drones just about to be created, so not really going to get a lot of economic disruption. That single Zelda is not going to be sufficient to take down that hive by a long shot. Getting a cybernetic score down at the natural expansion, I guess trying to hide it from this overlord. I'm not sure the overlord wants to take free hits. The drone's going to evacuate, so that does delay a little bit of mining as that's out looking to pocket. But again, Zazu actually even in workers right this second. 
So in a strong situation overall, and he doesn't mind, well, shouldn't mind the additional damage on that hatchery, although he at some point does need to go ahead and dispatch that. Two more zealots being sent out. Looks like Zergling speed being upgraded to Hydral Stent is in fact getting dropped on top of Lair, but this is, looks like Zazu currently sticking to three hatch play overall. And we do have the Zergling, so unfortunately an overcommitment of Zerglings to the three o'clock. So plenty to dispatch there, but now we've got range moving in with the two Zealots against the five Zerglings. Should, yeah, getting the better shot of that, trying to preserve a little bit of shield. But that's leaving two Zealots to now walk into the natural expansion. It looks actually that they're going to do... So the Zealot Dispatch of the 3 o'clock, still no mining there. They're going to go ahead and skip and go right to the main. This is actually a huge, huge play for range. Because first of all, he scouts the lair. He scouts the Hydralis Den. And that might provoke him to skip the initial Corsair. It looks like he did drop a Citadel of a Dune behind this. Plus one weapons is also on the way. And he's also getting some counter economic damage. Range finally... Having his zealots taken out, looks like he was able to disrupt a bit of the gas as well. But getting some solid economic damage done to go ahead and put him back in range <laughs> of this match. Second gas getting dropped. He is continuing to build the Corsair. Citadel of Dune behind this does not have the gateway flood as of yet. Likely because of earlier damages to his economy. Zerglings now pressing towards the front. They do have that speed upgrade. And they're able to slip through that gap. Again... Range not doing the best job of protecting things. That Overlord going to get wiped out, but the Zerglings once again going to push up and tax that gas. The Zealots actually remaining, okay, for a moment remaining at the front. A cannon getting dropped in the, this is going to serve two purposes to defend against a potential Mutalisk swap, but additional probes getting wiped out. So Zazu in a very, very comfortable position here. And finally, the Zerglings getting cleared out. So one Overlord down, but that was the Sacrificial Overlord regardless. I'm, not, I'm sure Zaz is kicking himself since those Zerglings were able to get across because it might feel like a bit of a waste. We have speed being upgraded and Hydralisks on the ground, plus Lurker Tech behind this. And I'm wondering if we're going to see a, a transition to a style that was utilized and pioneered by the late great In-Control Robinson. Jeff In-Control Robinson. Manzerg, where you utilize drop with Lurkers and Hydralisks to really pin it, uh, punish the pun the positioning of your Protoss opponent. Drop into the main, pin them back, and it is particularly effective against a Protoss who is late on robotics facility and overextending with troops like this. So we got a single Lurker out. Looks like it's just going to wander out to the front. Should range actually these cannons and be able to take out the gateway and the forge, potentially. But we got the four Zolts. They're going to get rejected because we already have a Lurker right there. And again, we have a movement towards... Templar tech. Robotic facility just now getting dropped. Zealots, more zealots actually walking out the field. Looks like some zerglings did in fact engage those zealots. Didn't really need to. The Corsair actually being very, very active and forcing Zazu in the red. So Zazu also missing a few opportunities. He's got an okay drone count. Again, still sitting on three base play. So gonna try to, yeah, and there we see the drop upgrade as well as some additional Hydralisk upgrades to really make this thing sail, and we'll see if it pays off for him. Where the one advantage of this is it's going to be a smaller Corsair count overall, which really opens up Overlord movement mid-map, although the Corsair right now, with the Zealot underneath, getting a lot of damage done. Drones now peeling out of the natural expansion. Zealots matching Hydralisks right here. So the drones are going to have to fend for themselves, at least until another wave of units are produced. And also, I think Ranged has to be scratching his head seeing these Hydralisks and not in large numbers going for a bust on the front. So I have to suspect that he's going to be expecting a drop. A couple drone, additional drones getting wiped out. So now Ranged actually taking the economic lead with that. Specifically, uh, particularly because we're sitting on three base. Ooh, man, additional drone kills. And also these Corsairs getting unchallenged. Three kills already. Might be This Corsair, I should say, might be able to get four. So the Corsair having a lot of bonus. Evolution Chamber there. It looks like a fourth hatchery is being dropped to the 3 o'clock location. A little bit late, and honestly, I'm not sure how utilize... Well, we'll see if that drone count resurges to allow those larvae to be utilized. Overlord Speed has been noted here by ranged. He's dropping some additional... So everything's been wiped out on that front by that lurker. That's I don't see an additional forge. So there, well, okay, there's the forge in the background. It's not remaining spinning. We do have a gateway flood behind this. But is this the first observer? That might be the first observer out on the field. So it's going to be one observer. It looks like ranged is anticipating potential drops, putting pylons at the far edge just in case. And also 
sailing out. So the okay, first detector is going to be able to deal at least with that initial lurker. I don't know that these Tark Temple are going to have a lot of success because there's still plenty of defense here at the 3 o'clock at the natural expansion as well. And here we see that initial drop moving out. As range is moving, honestly, a light attack force out of position. However, he does have a sizable supply lead. If you deduct 25 workers, though, the mass shifts a bit. So the Dark Temple are going to get caught. So it looks like Zazu is going to be able to execute there. And he's going to be able to unload these lurkers. And this is... A pylon that's powering it looks like at least well okay th these are to the north so two of these gateways could get empower unpowered with that gateway taken out and that would be a considerable hit to range's economic output in the meantime he's staging up to go ahead and try to grab that nine o'clock that's coming at great delay so yeah we got two gateways unpowered it looks like still five are active but these lurkers doing all sorts of damage some high templar getting picked off in the midst of this so ranged infrastructure, despite having a pretty solid worker count, getting obliterated. And even if he takes the 9 o'clock right now, he does need to reestablish that gateway count. And in the meantime, ooh, nice pick off of the Observer right there with the Hydralisks. Finally, a Psy Storm does catch both Lurkers, leaving them weakened. Another great Psy Storm. But one Lurker still remains, and this is still a lack of Observers. They're going to try to morph to Archon in the midst of this. And Rain Zazu, feeling like he's done sufficient damage, going to go ahead and scoop up what remains and sneak back on out. He's still sitting on three hatcheries. He could probably take a fourth, considering how pinned back range is right this second, trying to rebuild that gateway count so he can utilize the resources that are coming in. Still has the supply lead, but that supply lead is mostly in workers, and we're seeing an all-in counter from Zazu, just pouring everything in. And this is as that Nexus is coming online, as these gateways are being tacked on, another Overlord moving forward, going to empty things out, try to draw the forces back as they strike the front. And there's still a minimum amount of observers, keep in mind, from range to be able to defend this. So this is going to be a key moment, and that looks like an overwhelming attack force. A lot of Psystorm was expended at the main in that defense. A shuttle being produced rather than an observer, which is bad news. The Archon trying to defend the lines. It's going to pop, and a Lurker safely burrowing here at the natural expansion and range simply because of the earlier damages he's got some high templar that do not have storm but he does not have a sufficient army to retake that natural expansion hydralisks wiping out the gas looks like they should be able to just pin out the nexus take out that templar archives which should absolutely be huge and allow zazu to dominate the map otherwise although zazu continuing to apply the pressure he's moving another group of hydralisks he wants the kill right here it's, it's interesting because he's still down supply. And look at this little maneuver. He's going to go ahead and drop some lurkers to morph on the ramp, pinning out range's attack forces. Range is getting the 9 o'clock base up, but it's going to be a while before he's able to mine out of it. Three base Zerg beats one base Protoss by a mile. And range needs to redrop tech. On top of it, Zazu can just go ahead and pull back and attack that 9 o'clock location. Right now, burrowing on the line gets a high templar with it he's also getting some good damage on the zealots the zealots swarming able to take at least a lurker out but those are again additional troops that range can't afford to lose getting a good size storm on the low ground unfortunately missed the one lurker that's latent in position and this is the, the one observer for quite a long period of time no robotics behind this that i'm seeing as of yet so he really needs to protect that observer which is going to make getting out uh, somewhat of a challenge. We have a shuttle scooping up with a high Templar and two Zealots to maybe try to equalize things. I'm not sure that the 9 o'clock base has been scouted. Maybe it has by this Overlord. Overlord's taken a, a spot of damage. It might have been by an earlier Corsair. I might have missed a drop behind this as well towards the main that might have gotten cleaned up, but I think this might have been spotted. We do have some Hydralisks waiting for the shuttle. Unfortunately, they're outnumbered. Drone scattering. Psy Storm able to catch two drones. And that is it for the Psy Storm, so it's up to the Zealots that are remaining. But the Zealots getting a lot of damage done, and Zazu is playing at such a light worker count, as he, again, was just continuing to pile on the troops, that he might be in a spot of trouble, actually. He's just sitting at the 21 workers versus 50 otherwise. Lurkers replanting themselves on the low ground. Range doing a good job of protecting that Observer. There's no Overlord to pick it off. Dropping some Psy Storm and trying to peck away with the Dragoons as best he can, still taking a lot of damage as he's making his way out. But he's not, so supply counts are somewhat close. 
He's really low on troops. We got another drop making its way out. That shuttle's gone. The 9 o'clock base, in the meantime, was pushed in and taken out. And now, right, actually losing this base really puts him in a terrible position because even at the lower drone count, very quickly, yeah, Zazu can replenish. So Zazu able to clear things out in a chaotic game one, but going to secure the first match, and this is going to be quite the series. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.